Well, he was trying to teach me that the most important virtue next to love is probably humility. Didn't realize it until five, six years ago. And God said that in his word. Isaiah 57. Let's start there, just quickly. For this is what the high and lofty one says, he who lives forever whose name is holy. I live in a high and lofty place, but I also live with him who is contrite and lowly in spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. God says, I live in the high and lofty heavens. I am majestic and holy. I have the earth as a footstool. He says another place. And I just trample on it. It's all done. And I say, oh yeah. That's the God I was raised with. The God who I feared. And God says, but that's not the only place I live, Henry. I also live with those who are humble of spirit and contrite of heart. And in Isaiah 66, he says the same thing over, but he goes a step further. Has not my hand made all these things so they came into being, declares the Lord? This is the one I esteem. He who is humble, contrite in spirit, and who trembles at my word. God says, you want to know something? Henry, I live with contrite and humble people. Two places, the high and lofty heavens, and with humble and and contrite people. And secondly, he says, I look up to those kind of people. Can you imagine God saying to you, I admire you. I look up to who you are and what you are seeking. That's my heart, he says. I esteem you. And what do I esteem about you? Your contrite and humble spirit and your trembling at my word. Your desire in your heart is to do your will. Now, I dare say that there isn't a person in this midst this morning who doesn't desire to some degree to know more about God or to do more with Him or for Him. That's the Spirit of God. Thanks be to God. But the interference is the evil one doesn't want it to happen. And now go on. I can give you more Old Testament passages. There's a beautiful passage. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and would stop their sitting and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear. They will forgive. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. There's Jesus who comes along and says, Huh, I will exalt the humble and I will lower the proud. And unless you become like a little child, humble like a little child, you'll never see the kingdom of God. It's not for arrogant people. It's not for mature people. It's for people who are willing to be childlike. And then the ultimate comes, I think, and this is one that really got me, was where James and Peter both say, God opposes the proud and he exalts the humble. God opposes the proud and he exalts the humble. Now you want to start a battle that is guaranteed to fail and you're guaranteed to lose is to be proud and oppose God. And proud people do that very subtly. They say, God, I can do this by myself. Thank you. I know you've said this, but I choose not to go this way at this time. God says, well, good luck. He doesn't say, God bless you. He just says, good luck at that point. (laughs) Good luck. And you find out, as I did, time and time again, that you hit the wall And you say, God, what's wrong? I'm trying to do your will here. Now, come on. Help me. And Jesus says, stop. Surrender. Let go. Only what is done in me and with me and for me counts. Everything else is immaterial. 